Soren of House Markov from Modern Horizons 3 is the perfect upgrade for Modern EO brand, and in this video, I'm going to show you why. Why is Soren of House Markov so good in Neo brand? Well, let's just dive right into it. So what exactly is this brand new card for Modern Horizons 3? So for one in a black, so two mana total, you get a legendary creature. That's a 1-4 with lifelink and extort. And I'll be honest with you, those abilities do not matter. What does matter is the triggered ability, which is if you gain three or more life post-combat, you transform Soren into the Planeswalker side. And then they have a static ability of also extort whenever you cast a spell, still doesn't matter. And then plus two, create a food token, minus one, deal damage to any target equal to the number of life that you gain this turn. And if you understand why Neil Brand would want to play this card, that's great. But it's going to deal the opponent lethal damage 100% of the time, roughly. So the idea here is that in this deck, you exile two green cards to play your Allosaurus Rider. From there, you can cast a Neoform, sometimes even on the first turn if you have a Chancellor of the Tangle in your opening hand. So you sacrifice this Allosaurus Rider, you search your library for a Gristlebrand. You now pay 14 life and you draw 14 cards. From there, you draw into Nourishing Shoal. Ding! This is the card that gains life. You can exile the Galta that's in your deck as a creature that can put the Gristle Brand from your hand onto the battlefield. Or you can exile this giant worm with a high mana value and just gain a buttload of life. So then you draw more cards until eventually you have a pair of Mox Amber. So this is why Soren is good. So you play the Mox Amber. So it taps for a mana of any color of a legendary creature you control. So the problem with this deck has traditionally been that you can only make black mana due to Gristle Brand being black. So you make a black mana, you tap it, and then you play another Mox Amber. Legend Roll happens. You play another Mox Amber, so that's two total, and then you tap that for black. From there, you play the Soren. And then you go to post-combat where it transforms, and then you win the game. So traditionally, you used to have to play a bunch of different cards in order to filter the color of mana. You don't have to do that anymore. It just double black mana is good enough. And one reason that this makes the combo so much better, other than just the black mana, is you need less cards in order to win the game as well. So you, we got to cut a slot from the deck that was required for winning the game, and instead we're able to play additional flex spots, like this main deck copy of Veil of Summer, for example, which is just really nice. So... That's one reason. We also aren't forced into playing double endurance anymore. I'm still playing one in case Soren is discarded or milled or just, you know, something crazy. But you don't have to play the endurance either. That could be another Veil of Summer or a third copy of Pact of Negation. But I am choosing to play this endurance today. So that is why the deck is good. Anytime you could take a combo and reduce the number of cards it needs in order to win, it gets a little bit better. And in this case, in my opinion, a lot better. So I'm really excited to win today with Soren of House Markov because I think it's a huge improvement. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and uh, maybe I'll respond. I probably will because I do to most comments, but thank you for watching. Let's go see you in action. I'll see you in match number one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first round. We're on the draw and I've opened up a hand that theoretically plays magic. However, the Mox Amber is like a mulligan. We don't want this Galta. And then though we have the Chancellor of the Tangle, there's nothing to do with it making this a dead card. This hand is a big trap. So we're going to send it back. This hand is not a big trap. This hand is much better. We will keep this. And if we draw a Neoform on the first turn, we have a turn one win with Pact of Negation back up. So we're going to keep this and put the Gristle Brand on the bottom of the deck. I will reveal Chancellor of the Tangle. They play Wooded Foothills, and it looks like they're passing the turn here. Come on, Neoform. Preordain. Okay. Let's just start by playing the Preordain. Which might seem crazy, but if I find Neoform, I want to keep this in hand for, as a green card. I don't want either of these, so we'll put those both on the bottom. Another preordained. Let's Abundant Harvest looking for that Neoform. We'll say non-land. Ding! 
All right, so now we just need a green card to exile to the Sales Horse Rider. Commercial District, and they kept the card on top of their deck. Mountain. Piratic Ritual, we're facing Ruby Storm. I just 5-0'd with this deck list last night. Love it. That's a turn two rail. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Reckless Impulse, okay. Ruby Medallion and Manamorphose, both of those were great hits. They have one card left in hand, they Manamorphose. They do need two more instance or sorceries to transform the Rail into the ultimate. If they have two cards in hand, it's certainly possible. A single Striker Rich would also do it. Glimpse the Impossible, well that is probably going to be great here. Alright, so we need them to miss on the Manamorphose flip here. They lost the flip. All right, well, we need the card in hand to, we don't, we need no more instants or sorceries. That's what our goal is here. Even though we have a turn two. Oh no. Come on. They fizzled. So now we need to draw a green creature, a green card, period. Let's see it. That'll do. All right, so we're going to play Allosaurus Rider. Exile these. Green, blue, Neoform. Go grab the Gristlebrand. Draw seven. We hit our Nourishing Shoal. I want to... Our deck's currently a multiple of seven. Although that doesn't matter as much with this list. Let's just draw um, the Worm. We'll Summoner's Pact. Go get the Worm. And now we'll gain 15. Draw seven. We will play the Zurin Orb. Let's gain a couple more life here. Play the Mox Amber. Tap it for black. I guess we can draw some more cards. We found the second worm, so we can gain 15 more life here. We drew another shoal. So now that this list is playing Galta to put Gristlebrand from your hand onto the battlefield, Galta becomes the next best thing to exile after you've exiled all your worms. So we're going to exile the Galta. Okay, and now we'll draw seven. And you might be worried that I won't be able to draw the rest of my deck. We do have the Endurance. So let's just say hypothetically the bottom six cards... Uh, contain the other Mox Opal, and they do, it's not a problem. So we're going to gain seven more life. And now we will Endurance, exiling a Neoform. And this is one of the many reasons to play the Endurance. So now we'll target ourselves. The Endurance sacrifices to itself. We put those on the bottom. And now we just draw seven more. Okay. And now the other Mox Amber is right here. We'll play it. Tap for mana. Play the Sorin. So now we switch phases, Soren will flip, and now we will minus the Soren and deal them a lot of damage. How about that? All right, that's game number one versus Ruby Storm. We don't need the Pact of Negations in this matchup. Ruby Storm doesn't play any way to interact, so we don't want those. We also don't need the Veil of Summer. So I guess we'll bring in a Besaju and then like maybe a couple snap back just so that way we might be able to interact with them a little bit. The alternative is like a couple copies of Leyline of Sanctity, but I don't actually love that. But I guess Snapback's not that great either. Yeah, let's try the Ley Lines. Because I was thinking if they play a rail, like there's a chance that they just recast it and it doesn't matter. Well, this is a turn one with Leyline. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could have saved this hand for a better matchup. Uh, yeah, we will keep, put the Ley Line into play, reveal the Chancellor. Wow, what a hand. Scalding Tarn Pass, okay. I'm going to attempt to kill you, opponent. We will play the Botanical Sanctum, play the Summoner's Pact. We'll go grab Allosaurus Rider. And now we'll play the Rider, exiling the Chancellor and Abundant Harvest. We will now cast Neoform. Grab the Gristlebrand, draw seven. All right, we did not hit a shoal. Draw seven more. All right, we hit shoal. We'll play Mox Amber. And I also hit a Summoner's Pact. So now we will go get the Worm out of the deck. There we go. And now we will gain 15 life. Draw seven, draw seven again. I'm at seven life, so we do need to hit another shoal here. And I did. So we'll tap this Mox Amber for black. We'll play the other Mox Amber. We already have enough to win the game here. So I don't actually need to go any deeper. So we'll gain seven. Play the Sorin. I guess I can draw seven again. There's no harm. Oh, if they Veil of Summer. Oh my! 
That's why you leave Impact. They veil us under the Soren. Did I just lose? Maybe, I don't know. I didn't consider Veil of Summer. Am I going to have a turn one that's just blown out here? Well, minus the Soren. Yep, they have Veil of Summer. And I can't pay for uh, Summoner's Pact. I did not consider Veil of Summer. Wow. Okay. So, I just learned something. <laughs> we had a nuts hand and I blew it. Okay. So, let's get these ley lines out of here. Let's bring the packs back in. Yeah, let's submit this. Actually, let's get rid of the Besaju. We'll bring in a third pack. Uh, all right, I'm going to have to remember that. On the play. This hand is very good. We will keep. I do need to find my Rider, though. And now they're just mulliganing very aggressively. Down to five. Reveal the Chancellor. Okay, so we get a green mana. We will Abundant Harvest. We'll say non-land. Another turn timber. We'll play land. Pass the turn. So we're in a Allosaurus Rider waiting room. Bloodstained Mire. Shoal. We'll just play another turn timber here. Pass the turn. Commercial District. Wooded for Hills. They're strongly representing that Veil of Summer. We drew the Summoner's Pact. I don't think it's correct. So I'm going to just wait a turn. Because if I wait a turn, I can pay for the Summoner's Pact. Well, actually, if I went for it this turn, I could have waited... Or I could have paid two because of the Mox Amber. And step they seek the beast. Ruby Medallion. That is a good one. You have a medallion. We draw another Summoner's Pact. I will play Gemstone. Let's play the Summoner's Pact. We will grab an Allosaurus Rider. Play the Rider exiling these. Cast Neoform. They, I was going to say they might want to consider Veil of Summer here. Because I will be able to Pact of Negation later. We'll grab Gristlebrand. Play the Mox Amber. So, I think I'm supposed to try to gain a ton of life here. We'll draw 7. Let's gain 15. Draw 7 more. We'll gain 15. We'll gain some more life. And now I will play a Rider. We're just going to put a lot of power on the table for next turn. While gaining a lot of life. Alright, we'll draw 7. I'm at 36. Let's play another Rider. Exile these. That's 18 damage. Abundant Harvest, I'll say non-land. And I think we're good to pass here. Just discard some extra lands. So they need to kill me here. Reckless Impulse. Seek the Beast. Manamorphose. Pyrotic Ritual. They have five cards in hand. Desperate Ritual. Splicing a Desperate Ritual. There's a Rail. Desperate Ritual, okay. They did win the flip. So now Rail has ultimated. Well, can ultimate, I should say. And they're ultimating Rail. They hit Past in Flames. that might actually just be dead here. We need them to not find Grape Shop, but I'm pretty sure I'm dead. They play a few Rituals, another Ren's Resolve. Glimpse the Impossible. Another Ruby Medallion. Manamorphose. They hit Double Wish. So they have access to Grape Shot now. They play Wish. Blood Moon. That's going to beat me here because I won't be able to pay for my Summoner's Pact. Yeah, okay. Well, that's not exactly the showing I wanted in the first round where the new weak condition that I'm trying to hype might have cost me the match. And might have. It definitely did. So that's something to consider. Uh, I did not think about Veil of Summer when I was so excited about this. So... Maybe the lackluster uh, round one is a sign. Who knows? Let's see how the next four matches pan out. But now we've got something to reconsider here. And I think that's pretty interesting. Let's see how match number two goes. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, let's try to bounce back after that brutal match one loss. We're on the draw, I will keep. Our opponent has revealed a Gigantha of the Wellspring. We will reveal Chancellor of the Tangle. A red-white tap land, okay. 
Neoform off the top rope? Let's see it. Nope. All right, so we should Abundant Harvest looking for that Neoform. Non-land. Well, there it is. We have a turn two win. We just have to hope that our opponent doesn't have anything to stop us here. Den of the Bugbear. Um, sure. No disrespect, but I'm not reading this. I don't know what it does, but it's not relevant. All right, so Botanical Sanctum. We will play an Allosaurus Rider, exile these two one mana value spells. Neoform. We will select Gristlebrand. Draw seven. Sweet. Okay. Maybe I should just always leave in like one Pact of Negation, no matter what. Like in this matchup, I like an answer Solitude. Like maybe I just shouldn't be boarding out all of these. Could probably board out the Veil of Summer though. Let's bring in a couple copies of Besaju. Let's try this for now. Okay, so this hand isn't quite as fast, but I think I'm going to keep it. We could cycle Waterlogged Grove. We can play Abundant Harvest. I think that it's probably fine enough. Another Rider. Let's try to find that Neoform. Play the Abundant Harvest. Whoops, can't play it off blue mana though. And now we'll play it off green mana. Non-land. We found the Worm. Aether Hub. Amped Raptor, you got it. And they don't play the spell, which was Scurry of Gremlins. Yeah, that doesn't work here. We draw another land. We'll play the Waterlogged Grove. We already have seven cards in hand, so I'm not going to draw a card right now. We can do it on their end step. Inspiring Vantage. Another Amped Raptor. Lelia the Blade. Forged. Reforged. That was close. And now they'll attack for five. Lelia exiles the top card, which is a Ragavan. I go to 15, and they play the Ragavan. And step, we will try to draw into Neoform. I do not. Another opportunity here. Evolution is a win next turn. We have to, you know, live that long, but this Nourishing Shoal should help. They're attacking us for 10 as of right now. Could be more. They play Scurry of Gremlins. All their creatures get plus one, plus zero, oh, and haste, so now it's even more damage. Okay, they could pump their team again here. They don't. And now I'm at 12. I guess what I could have done is I could have destroyed Scurry of Gremlins with the trigger on the stack, and then that way I would have taken two less damage, four less damage, I would have been at 16, which is two Gristlebrand activations. I didn't even consider besaging the Scurry of Gremlins. All right, well, now I might lose because of it, because now I only get one Gristlebrand activation. Okay, we will grab Gristlebrand. Let's draw seven. And I did not draw into a Nourishing Shoal. Yeah, that's my own fault. I could have besaged you, I didn't think of it until after. And there's the Nourishing Shoals, the top card. So my misplay definitely cost me there. Rough? Okay, we'll try to play better in game number three. That was such a small detail, but I, I messed it up. This is close to a turn one win. If one of these lands was a green card, we'll play Botanical Sanctum. I did not reveal the Chancellor. There's no real point here. I will keep both of these. Pass the turn. They play Den of the Bugbear. We will play Botanical Sanctum. Play the Allosaurus Rider. Green, blue. Play Neoform Sacrificing the Rider. And our opponent just concedes. That's fine with me too. We are now one and one. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, third match, we're on the play. I did a little bit of research going into this round. Speaking of, uh, you know, me blabbing my mouth, this is a turn one win, we'll keep. So I decided, to, I was just curious, like what percentage of the format actually plays Veil of Summer? So according to MTG Goldfish, you have to hit deck number eight before you find the first copy, which would be Jund Indomitable Creativity. 
and it plays it as a two of in the sideboard. And then the next deck is the four color Omnath deck that plays two in the sideboard. So I was really like, oh, we're probably not going to be able to play the Soren just because it can never beat Veil of Summer. That's not actually the case. I think we just happened to get paired against an opponent round one who was playing Veil of Summer, and I boarded poorly. Um, so if you think your opponent's playing Veil of Summer, you can just board in more Pact of Negation and then not worry about it. You just need to not be a dummy like me. All right, and now we'll play Neil Form with two Nourishing Shoal already in hand. Grab the Gristle Brand, and our opponent just snap concedes. Love it. So in these situations, I don't believe you sideboard. Your main deck is already set up for an unknown opponent. Bringing in cards like Besaidu or whatever just makes your deck a little bit worse for no real reason why. So I choose to just resubmit and trust, you know, my deck building. Back to my point, though, about Veil of Summer. It's pretty much only the other combo decks in the format that play green that play it. And I'm not sure if that's a good enough reason to not run the Soren win, because the Soren win also doesn't lose the Graveyard Heat, unlike the Grape Shot win or the Thassa's Oracle win. And I feel like the Soren win is just the cleanest. So maybe that's something you need to accept, but also play better if you think your opponent has Veil of Summer. This hand is not very good. We will send it back. Unfortunately, we'll go to five. This hand is fine. We'll keep. Put the worm on the bottom and a turn timber symbiosis. So this looks like a turn three win, assuming I can find another land, but also uh, a couple more green cards. It looks like they're on death and taxes here. Well, there's another land. Let's play preordain. That is a nourishing shoal, but I don't want to exile nourishing shoal. I think I'm supposed to keep it anyway, though, and we'll pass. Maybe I'll get lucky and we'll just draw Neoform. That would be delightful. Land number two. Okay, I can't search my library. That's a problem. Gemstone Mine. Yeah, I'm thinking we're probably not going to win this game. But we do have Cyborg, so that's good. Yep. And that's an Archon of Amiria. We can go to game number three now. Let's take out the Veil of Summer and one Pact of Negation. And then we can bring in the Snapbacks. Let's try this. I want to leave one Pact of Negation in case they have Solitude. We're on the play. Double Chancellor. No Neoform effect. Bummer. This hand doesn't do anything. We should go to five. I mean, these hands just have not been good. I suppose we keep. We'll put the second evolution on the bottom. And the Waterlogged Grove. I don't love my chances at winning with this hand. Abundant Harvest will say non-land. Soren, great. <laughs> yeah, we're in trouble. The highs and lows of playing Neobrand. Exciting turn one wins, but also just drawing garbage. Planes go, they say. Another abundant harvest. We'll play that. Non land. We find Neoform. We still don't have a rider or another green card. Land number two. No play. That's interesting. Another Neoform. We will pass. And Sep Containment Priest. That's not very nice. We do have the snapback, but Containment Priest does have Flash. Uh-oh. We don't have any basic lands in our deck. This White Orchid Phantom is going to be a problem. Another new card from Modern Horizons 3. So they're going to destroy my breeding pool. We could sh I don't even want to shuffle because I know that I don't want the bottom cards. We'll take a draw. Preordain. Let's play it. We don't want either of these. Those can both go on the bottom. Okay. So if I draw land number two, we can try to create a window with snapback where we're able to win. They, they also need to not have two mana open. I'm at 14. I think Archon of Amiri is going to do it. Because I just bottomed the other snapback. Yeah, we're dead. Unfortunate, the highs and lows of Neobrand. We are now one and two. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number four, let's try to get back to even. We're on the play. Our opponent reveals a Gigantha of the Wellspring. So our hand is lands and spells, but none of them are combo pieces. We have to mulligan. This is acceptable. 
We'll put the Mox Amber on the bottom. And we'll start with the Preordained looking for our Allosaurus Rider. Instead, we find two lands. And then we draw a land. Okay, so we are set on mana. We need to find the Rider. Scalding Tarn. Is this Ruby again? It does look like the Ruby list I 5 0 with. Oh, I wasn't playing Slick Shot Show Off. Okay, so this is just Prowess. Prowess with green. Galta. We'll play Botanical Sanctum. And Abundant Harvest non land. Preordain. Come on, deck. There's our rider. Perfect. Put the land on the bottom. We'll take the rider. Pass the turn. Abundant Harvest. They fetch. Another channeler. And now they attack for three. I'll fall to 17 life. We drew a Abundant Harvest, which is great here. Because now I don't have to exile the Nourishing Shoal. Green, blue. Neoform sacrificing the rider. Go get Gristlebrand. Draw seven. Let's draw seven more. We'll play Zern Orb. Play the Mox. We don't even need the other Mox anymore. Let's gain some more life. I guess I, in theory, want it, but I'll just gain four life for now. Let's Summoner's Pact. Go get a Worm. And then we'll use that Worm to gain 15 life. Summoner's Pact again. Grab the other Worm. Let's gain 15 more. Sweet. Draw some more cards. Two more copies of Shoal here. We'll gain even more life. And there's the Soren. So now we can just cast the Soren and win the game. We will f go to combat. And now post combat, the Soren transforms. I don't know why I said combat. It's combat. Uh, and then we'll hit them with the Soren. All right. So... Now we go to the next game. I did look at the prowess builds to see if they had Veil of Summer when I was doing that research. I did not see it. So keeping that in mind, I think we brought out one Veil of Summer. We'll keep one Pact of Negation. Let's just try the snapbacks. Game two, our opponent is started by revealing Gigantha. Here we have a hand that looks okay, but it's actually kind of bad. Like you only have Abundant Harvest for digging. The mana from this Chancellor isn't that useful. I think you should actually just Mulligan. This is much better. We will keep this, put the evolution on the bottom. I don't know if you need this Pact of Negation, but I want it just in case. Turn one Soul Scar Mage. It was a guaranteed green card for the Rider, which is nice, but if I draw land, then this becomes our green card. And then if I draw a green card, that doesn't matter. So there's very few bad draws here. So we'll play the Turn Timber, pass. They fetch with their Mesa. Slick shot, show off, Mishra's Bobble. I could just be uh, dead here. And by dead, I mean just getting my life total low enough where Gristlebrand won't work. They have five damage right now. They get in. Before combat, they mutagenic growth. So now that's one Gristlebrand activation. Nourishing Shoal was an insane draw here. All right, so we'll play the Rider. Exile these two. Neoform, sacrifice the Rider. Grab Gristlebrand. Let's draw seven. So I did not hit a worm. I think I'm supposed to just gain seven and pass. Because I haven't played any summoner's packs or packed of negations. So maybe the Gristlebrand is enough to keep me alive here. They have three cards. Blood Moon. I can beat Blood Moon. Yeah, you have a Blood Moon. Because Gristlebrand is already in play. So Gristlebrand only needs to hit black off of Mox Amber. I could also just attack. Go up to 18. They have two cards in hand. Let's do that. We will play a mountain. Pass the turn. So they're drawing up to their third card here. Soul Scar Mage. Okay. Underworld Breach. That's a spicy one. I did board in Snapback in case I need to try to draw into it. And now they play Mishra's Bobble. They target me, sure. That is not 18 damage. And now they're just going to attack with Soul Scar Mage. Okay. I'll take three down to 15. Underworld Breach sacrifices. And now they'll draw a card off Mishra's Bobble. Let's draw seven. Because if I find Snapback, I can just attack for lethal. I did not. 
I also did not find a nourishing shoal. I don't believe that these decks play gut shot, so I'm going to pay seven. Even if they did, I have Pact of Negation in my hand. We found a nourishing we found two nourishing shoals. So we'll gain seven. Let's gain seven more. I'll draw seven. Just looking for a snapback. Did not find it. I will go to one. We found our Mox Amber, but did not find the snapback. Uh, we'll play Zeran Orb. Make some red mana here because I can. Sacrifice some permanents. Okay. And now we can draw seven more. Leaves us with seven cards in the deck. I drew the other Mox Amber and the Nourishing Shoal. So the Nourishing Shoal is going to allow me here to gain 15. And now we can draw the rest of our deck. I am at 10 life. And there's both the Snapbacks and the Soren. Like, like everything was on the bottom of the deck. We will bounce the Slick Shot Show Off. Our opponent says GG's. GG's opponent. Swing, swing. All right, two and two, one match left to go. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? The final match, we're on the play. We have a Neoform, but no mana and no Allosaurus Rider. We will mulligan. We have a Rider and Neoform. Yeah, this hand is great. We need land two and then additional green cards. Bottom the Zuran Orb. Gemstone Mine. Tap for a blue. Preordain. Uh, Abundant Harvest is a guaranteed land, but uh, I'm going to bottom both. Maybe it's a little greedy. Well, there's a green card. I just need a land now. Thundering Falls. Come on, Doc. Pretty please. Give me a land. The Mishra's bobble me. All right. Time for the truth. Let's see it. Land. Nope. Pass the turn. I mean, if we weren't going to draw land, Pact of Negation was our best draw. Because we have everything else we need. Island. Grinding Station. Okay. We'll take a draw. <laughs> a Summoner's Pact. We'll pass the turn. The uh, bottom of Abundant Harvest really biting me in the butt right now. Tamio, okay. Mox Amber, Grinding Station. I mean, if Rodney Bedell has a Underworld Breach in hand, I believe I'm dead. That is, in fact, an Underworld Breach. Yeah, we did not find our land in time. Okay, we lose. Draw a card. Our land was not coming. All right, there it was. Two draws away. Shame. Let's bring in the Besejus. Get rid of the Veil of Summer. Bring in another Pact. I think we want to take out the Chancellor of the Tangles. Let's try this. On the play for game number two. Uh, yeah. This does it. We need another green card, but yeah. So having the Gristlebrand in hand, you want to search out the Galta with the Neoform. We will play Turn Timber. Pass. Mishra's Bobble, they use it immediately. Island, okay. Waterlogged Grove. We could just pass the turn. Flooded Strand. Playing the control game, it looks like. We'll draw a card. We drew the Galta. No! Literal worst draw in the deck. It's like drawing both the Gristlebrands. I don't know how we win now. I guess we have to Endurance back the Gristlebrand? This is real bad. All right, so step one, we need to discard Gristlebrand. Ah, sheesh. All right, so Gristlebrand is discarded. So we have to draw a couple different green cards now and then draw into Rider or the Endurance itself. Another Pact of Negation. Saga goes to the second chapter. Mox Amber, they have five cards in hand. The Seiju will play Waterlogged Grove Pass. And step, they create a construct and another construct. Lava Spur Boots. So we're in trouble here. I'm going to kill the construct token. I think I need to buy some time. We search out a hollowed fountain. We draw Preordain. Let's cast that. So the extra Summoner's Pact actually does help me here. Okay, so I think we keep both of these. And now we'll pass the turn. We need to untap again. But if we get to untap, I think we might have it. The Fairy Time Raveler. 
So it means my pact negations are now useless. So if they have any interaction, I lose. They tap the amber for mana, pick it up. Sacred Foundry. Play the Mox Amber again. Kappa Cannoneer. I was not expecting that. Sure. Another Mox Amber. I don't love the other Mox Amber because it means I lose if they have like a spell pierce, but I just can't afford to wait any longer, so we have to move. We will Summoner's Pact. Grab Endurance. We will Endurance. Exile Abundant Harvest. Target myself. And now we will Summoner's Pact again. Go get Allosaurus Rider. Play the Allosaurus Rider. Exile these two green cards. And then pray that Neoform resolves. Put it on the stack. Spell Pierce. So that'll do. So we had some misfortune this round. It happens. We went 2-3, and three, which isn't the best record. So Soren losing to Veil Summer is obviously not great. I wonder if it's still correct. So I brought it up to a friend in between rounds and they're like, well, theoretically, couldn't you loop Endurance with Mox Amber and then extort them out of the game? Which seems miserable, but it is an option. Uh, so we have 36 green cards in the deck. So it's interesting because you need to exile... Basically, you need to loop Endurance uh, at least like 18 to 19 times with the Extort because you have to make black mana and you need the Mox Ambers. And then you have to fill up your graveyard because if you're going to keep on drawing the Mox Ambers and the, uh, what is it called, the Endurance over and over, that's two cards. If you need to draw with Gristlebrand, you need five more. So are you like casting Nourishing Shoals and like your Pact of Negations? Like, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it seems like a lot. Um, you might be able to make it work depending on the deck list in order to beat Fail of Summer. Um, it's just an option you have. I don't know if it can actually work is the thing, but I think the inconsistencies of this build were tough. I tried uh, another league earlier but the problem with it was the mana base lost me a bunch of games and I just decided to drop and just fix the mana base and then re-record. So I was running a, a mana base that had fetch lands in it with a basic island and a basic forest. And I had the problem of I'd open up basic island in abundant harvest or basic forest and preordain and I just hated it. So I decided to go back to a more traditional mana base for this video. Um, but I don't know if... Sworn fixes anything it does open up a cyborg slot so or a main deck slot so you need one less card to win it's just neo brand is still highs and lows of variants and i don't think it necessarily fixes any of that so that's my take let me know what you think in the comment section down below i really do appreciate you watching have a great day and as always keep storming what you should do is like comment and subscribe because there's no better way to support us and if you enjoyed this video, head over to moxfield.com and follow us there. It's truly the best deck website on the internet. We update all of our decks there regularly with the latest and greatest technology, so you're always up to date. Once again, go check out Moxfield, and thank you for watching.